evening, everyone. And we'd like to thank all of you for coming out to Sisters of Town Bookstore and Cultural Center this evening. Those of you who've been here with us all day, we're grateful that you chose to take this day and spend it with us. Uh, today is a wonderful celebration. Uh, we have a brother who uh, came to us as a result of somebody that he knows and somebody that knows somebody else who told him about Sisters of Town Bookstore. And he said he'd like to do a book signing here. That's what we do. So we welcome uh, Brother Chisholm, who is the driver of the number six bus going oh, oh, across oh. the bridge over there to the Bronx. And so it is a pleasure and an honor to have somebody like this brother uh, to grace us with his presence today with his wonderful wife. Uh, she also calls. She's involved in his business, and that's what we got to do. We got to keep it as a family. So we were grateful that brother chose us, and we chose him. And so now he's here. After the words from my brother uh, Wayne Wesley, who lives all the way down in Atlanta, Georgia, via New York City. But when brother brought his book here, Wayne was here that day. So he took the book and read it and critiqued it and gave some suggestions and. Uh, so now it's befitting that he be the brother to introduce the brother since he read the book first. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, this, this particular book right here, getting into it and trying to explain what, what it's both feeling when I first saw it. He walked in the door with the book, I saw the book, I said, that's a thick book. <laughs> I said, I don't know, but I want to read that. And I heard him explaining the book about what it could be and what it was. I didn't talk to the book. And he left the book sitting over there on the side. And I picked the book up. And immediately within the first six or seven pages, the book had to be captivated. Because of a questionnaire that was in the book that he asked his patriots that they ride the bus to fill out as they were riding the bus before they got off the bus. And the responses that he got was so mind-boggling that it almost scared me that we are in a society now that we are really in trouble. We are truly in trouble, and we're in trouble as a people. Not just as a, a society itself, because we as a people are in trouble. And I think you can look all around you every day you can see things, we're killing each other, we're stabbing each other, we, 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 black on black crime is rampant, not just in New York, I'm from Atlanta, and they locking them up like it ain't nothing. Every crime you see come on TV is black brothers being against each other. But the unique thing about the questions he asks is a, is a mindset that we, we seem to be invoking here on our people. It's a mindset that we, I don't know where this mindset is coming from. It's coming from a position where we are like almost powerless to change. We have become powerless to change. I think some of us see the problems. I think some of us see what's going on. But we choose not to act. This book here, he tells a story in here that's fictional. But the story fits everything that's going on today. You can actually go into the news media and find every single thing that's related to this book. One of the questions that he asks in the book is, uh, I might not get it right verbatimly, one of the questions he asked in the book was, uh, one of the essay, the, 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 the survey questions, was who do you see in your life as being the most important person in your life. And he, after doing the survey, even though it was 1,500 people he surveyed, which we know that's just a snapshot, but that snapshot is the whole country. If you took that snapshot and you overlay it to every city you went to, it's the whole country. So when the answer came back, 80% of the answers said Beyonce, Snoop Dogg, and Jay-Z were the most important people in their lives. Something's wrong with that picture. 
something's wrong. I that one time did I hear mother, father, clergyman, brother, uncle, teacher, you name three people that can change your life in no way but to listen to them. You changing their lives by buying their products. That's right. <laughs> you making them rich. So this book shows us, and if you, when you read it, it's pointing in the direction. He's telling a story, but the story is telling you if we don't do something, this is where we are going to end up at. Or worse. Ever since Obama's been in office, he's been attacked. Ever since we have put him in office, we have even started to turn on him. Yes. Because yes. he's not doing this, he's not doing that, he's not doing this. But no one has took the fight to say, I want to stand up and help fight this fight. I think something is still I think something is better than nothing. Somebody has to do action and some action has to be taken. And when you have no action being taken, you are just to blame. You're sitting back complaining for not taking no action. That's right. And, and, and when I finally talked to the brother one day, he came back again before I left to go back to Atlanta. And I had to stop him. I said, you wrote this book. And I says, this book is kind of hell. I couldn't put it down. I couldn't stop reading it. Before I knew it, I was halfway through the book. But not taking his thunder and not taking him and the questions y'all need to ask him about this book, I just want you to know that this book is powerful as far as it telling a story, even though it's fictional, it's telling such a true story about us as a people and where we need to evolve to. And if we don't evolve, this this name right here, I'm gonna let him explain what it means. White out. This is a very powerful word. So remember this word when Mr. Peter Chisholm get up here. Remember this word. All right. It's your show, boy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me here. Thank you, Wayne Wesley. Thank you, Jennifer. And thank you, everyone who was here for giving me this time and opportunity. Uh, I am Peter Chisholm, and I wrote this book, White Out. And uh, Wayne spoke about what inspired me to write this book. Well, first of all, my children. My children, I have six children. Oldest 18, 17, 13, 8, 6, and 4. Okay? And I look at them and I look at this world that we're living in and I'm scared for them. And the reason why I'm scared for them is because they have no idea how wicked, how cruel, how sick this world is. Okay? Um, I've sheltered them the best that I can because I don't want them to be exposed to the horrifics that exist. But sooner or later, they are going to be exposed to it. So I could drop dead tomorrow. I do not believe I'm going to live forever. So because of that, I wrote the book more like an instruction on what I feel family should be, what friendship should be like, what love should be like, what your ambition and goal should be set at. And hopefully, it can provide some sort of light for them because the world is dark. I want to go just to Wayne spoke about, I wrote for, for a while this book. And I did do a survey, um, Queen Subway, E Train, and of course the BX6. And it scared me. It really scared me. The questions that I asked was who do you admire the most? Why do you admire this person? Are you happy with the way things are going in your life? What are you doing about it? What is your highest level of education? Have you ever read a chapter in the Bible? Do you go to church? Have you ever experienced hate or prejudice towards you? Is there any type of people you don't like? Why don't you like them? Do you believe that Satan exists? Those are the 11 questions that I asked. And the answers were scary, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna read 
what the answers are. But I'll give you a small snapshot, snapshot, snapshot of what they were. <laughs> well, who do you admire the most? The majority. Jay Z, Beyonce, um, Lil Wayne. Okay? And again, none said my mother, none said my father, none said my uncle, none said my teacher. Nothing of that nature. I asked, why do you admire them? They got bling blings. They got all the fly stuff. Okay? Nothing. I mean, some of these people, I'm not saying they're not worthy to be looked at, but it's, why do you like them? Not because they're giving back to, because some of them give back to the society and they, they're doing their thing that we don't know about. But none said that. It was all about what they can see. All right? And, and that's scary. It's really scary. Are you happy with the way things are going in your life? Not every single one of them said no. What are you doing about it? Not a damn thing. Not a, nothing. They're not doing anything, okay? What's your highest level of education? Those who are older than 21, I dropped out of high school. They didn't even go back to get their equivalency. Those who are still in school, they're gonna drop out. That way they could work, and the kind of work that I'm talking about is not the type that, you know, that way they can get this bling bling, okay? Have you ever read a chapter in the Bible? Nearly 100% of them said no. Exactly, all right? Do you go to church? Again, no, okay? Have you experienced prejudice or hate? Every single one of them said yes. Yes, they said yes, okay? And the prejudice that they received, mainly the young black and Spanish brothers and small cops. Over 50% were police. The other 40% was amongst each other. <laughs> Not the white man. None of them really said the white man. Amongst each other, okay? Um, Puerto Ricans against Dominicans. Um, Blacks against Caribbean blacks. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean, anyway. <laughs> okay? Uh, is there any type of people you don't like? The majority of them said, the people who my mother don't like. Or the people my homeboy don't like. Okay? Not that they've experienced anything, but they're using what you said as their reason to hate. All right? Why don't you like them? The majority of them shrug their shoulders. I don't know, they don't look like me, you know? One guy said he don't like nobody. He said he don't like nobody. He likes to stay to himself because his own family hates on him. His own family. And believe it or not, we have a lot of family members who hate on each other. Okay? Do you believe Satan exists? Nah. No. Maybe 10% said yeah. The rest of them said no. And that's the scary part. If you don't know that he exists, he knows you exist and he believes in you. And he's already got you where he wants you because you don't know he's there. So because you don't know he's there, you're easy target. You're easy to manipulate. You're easy to do what it is that he needs to do. That way, his war that he's going to lose can still provide. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it scared me. And this also, and I even asked my kids the same question, OK? And some of the answers were the same. But some of them were different because I I drill them. I, I, get, I get into them, all right? But the point is, I just had to write this book. And the book, basically, it's about a young brother who witnessed his father and his brother get killed by a white policeman for nothing. Something that we see every day, okay? And he used science and technology because he was a genius to expose all the secret Ku Klux Klan members in our judicial system, in our government, 
in our schools, in our church, and the daycare centers, right next door. Okay? And he formed something, an organization, that no one in this room can say ever existed. An, a, a, an organization that scared white America. Unity. Blacks, minorities have never, never united. There was always something. So now white America was scared because black folks, Spanish folks, they came together and they weren't budget because they were tired of being annihilated one by one. But what happened in this is he felt God turned his back on him because of what happened to his family. So he had a war or he had a beef with God. But he did not realize God loves him just like he loves every single one. And God did not want to lose him. But sometimes things happen in our lives that we can't change. We can't do nothing about it. Something happened to you. Something happened to your mom. Something happened to your brother. And yes, it can hurt us and it can make us very, very despondent. But guess what? You being despondent, you even going out there and retaliating, does that really change the bad that happened on that? No. But what we can do is we can learn from the bad, put our stupid differences aside, and stand. Because, you see, not every white man likes each other. I speak, I speak to white people. I got white friends. They don't like each other, but they know how to put their little BS aside and band together, and they rule. Where you and I, you used to date a girl, or you drive a BMW and I drive a little putt putt. I'm walking, so because of that, I'm dealing with you. We make silly little things stop us from coming together. In this book. I don't want to say this is the Bible. It's not. I'm still learning, okay? But let me just read one little thing from the end, okay? Not only that, but what you don't understand, what you don't experience or understand, you condemn. It's frustrating to know the truth when you try to teach it to dumb asses. They turn around and kill you for showing them the light. A good example for this is if I was a politician and I, did, I came up with a way where I'm going to take welfare out of this society, but I'm going to create jobs, there's a chance that many of the people who are on welfare is going to get together and get me killed because they're comfortable with the handout that the government has to control that they have one, okay? Many of us have a job, whether we're making 16, 20, 30, 40, $80,000 a year, those of us who have a job, okay? And we were going to a BMW dealer and look at a car that costs $60,000 and you make 30. But guess what? They will give you the credit to get this car because they know that you are now a slave to this car, okay? So you will not eat, you will you will not be able to buy a home, you won't be able to come together with other brothers and put your monies together to buy a business because you're a slave to a car. And the minute that car hits the street, it just depreciated big time, okay? But we're too stupid because we want to be like Jay-Z. We want the bling bling. We want to live like they are, but they got billions of dollars. We don't have anything, and then we will kill each other. My brother right here, there's another brother out there who will see you with a gold chain on, they'll kill you for that gold chain or for that fancy phone. That way they could sell it or wear it around their neck or whatever the case may be. That way they can acquire this thing that when they die, they go somewhere else anyway. We need to wake up. The W, the name of the organization in here is called WWTN, okay? And the way this young brother in here facilitated the whole thing, white America, white America thinks that 
white America is WWTN, but it's black. But because they think we are too dumb, we could never ever come up with something like this that cannot be infiltrated because we are Negroes, okay? So he used that and made all of America believe that this is a white organization who feels sorry for the black race. And they decided to do something about it. But what happens is, this is black. This is a black man. And he formed something that scared America to the point where, guess what? Respect was due. So now, when the white man is patrolling in his car, and he's picking on you for nothing because you're at, out after 9 o'clock and he feels that you shouldn't be out there. He couldn't do that because other blacks, Spanish, Asians, and even white folks joined the bandwagon and stood for a cause. You're not going to come here and destroy us anymore. We will fight and we will kill every one of you that try to kill one of us because our life is just as important as yours. Okay? Now, in my book, I'm not saying for us to become vigilantes. I'm saying we could become the modern day WWTN just by coming together. Let's just come together. What's the problem? Why can't we come together? Because we've been programmed. We've been programmed from the Willie Lynn Syndrome. We have been so embedded that we can't get out of this. And we need to because if we don't, Instead of it being white out, it's going to be black out. And we're going to be gone. And then we have this mentality that we learn from the white man, because the white man, he goes everywhere and he rules. His whole, mo his whole thing is to come to a foreign land, kill all the Indians, and then rule, call them savages, and make the laws. Okay? Then, if there's no more Indians to kill, if there's no more black people to kill, then they turn on each other. Where are you from? You're from Ireland. You're from Portuguese. Well, you're the new nigger. So now we're going to fight you and eventually self-destruction. We have to make a stand. And you know what? We need to do this and stop. We don't support each other. Okay? If Jay-Z, Beyonce, Oprah Winfrey, and all the big money people Okay, P. Diddy, all of them, put together all their monies and said, we want to own our own automobile. And they got the factory built. They got the engineers to engineer a fly-looking ride. Everything. They will still fail because we will still buy the Mercedes. We will still buy the BMWs. We will still buy all of white America's cars and the Europeans. We will not support each other. And because we will not support each other, we fail. We got to start now. I'm, all it takes is one person, one lady. Me and you stand together. And if we work, Gerald Bell and her boyfriend is going to join the bandwagon. Then now it's four of us. Then you, ma'am, you, ma'am. And if we all start to come together, we can make a move. And it doesn't have to be hostile. Let's start teaching each other. Teach. The older folks, make a stand. We let the government empower our youths and scare the hell, of our, hell out of us that we can't even chastise our children anymore. Mm -hmm. I was waiting on a, a 35 bus, and I heard two young ladies talking. And one said to the other, you know, I'm going to that party. How did you get your mother to change her mind? I told her that if she didn't let me go, I was going to call ACS and tell them that she beat the hell out of me. So she's letting me go to the party. And I don't know what held my tongue from, <laughs> from interjecting. I would have gotten in trouble. Okay? But this is where we're at. We can govern our parents, and our parents can't do anything. And all the ace do 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 Welfare, all the welfares, all the child support, all the different things that's institutionalized. It wasn't institutionalized for nobody except the minorities. It's all in place, and then they give 
women the power to hurt the men, and they don't even know that they hurt us. It's a game. It's a. It's all about the bling blings. It's all about the this. It's all about the that. We need to get together. We need to know those of you who don't believe in God or Allah or whatever. You got to believe that someone exists higher than us. Okay, a supreme being. And we have to start loving each other. Because when we love each other, guess what? We love God. No matter how you look at it, Winnie Birch loved me enough to support me in an event that she was doing at the Jake Jackson Center. When she loved me enough, guess what? She loved God. And she loved the idea of hope because she loved me. She didn't have to. But this is what we need to start, we need to start doing. My sister back there loved me enough to invite me to her school for career day. She loves me. She loves God. We all love each other and don't realize that we have the potentials to love. And my book, although it's very gory, sex, very explicit, I have to catch the youths because today's youths, they're not going to read my book if it's too tainted. Okay, so what they're going to do is if I, if I can write to gravitate them to turn to the next page, they will. So I have to be real. My book is hard. The murder scenes, again, something that they know about. Okay, if you're 14 years old or older, there's nothing in my book that they don't know. Today's youths know more about what we think they don't know than we do. So. I'm not going to tamper it down any bit because this is what's going to grab them, okay? But regardless of how you look at it, in the end, those who give this book a chance and read it and read it with an open mind, what you realize is I'm just trying to let you know we need God. We need God and we need to depend on Him. And we have to also realize Satan exists and He's depending on us. And that's all white out is about. Anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask? Yeah, it seems like you only interviewed the young, under say under 30, 35. Oh, what about the older? The senior answer seemed to be very young, very young. Answer. I did. I, I I only spoke because it was the the older folks. They said already, whether it's negatively or positive. Someone 
bunch of research. I, I mean, the book part, I wrote the story, but the book, it's my wife, she got it out there, because I wrote it just for my kids, like, okay, I'll write it, I'll make some copies for them, and when I'm dead and gone, this will be theirs. But she read the story, and she took the initiative to start investigating. It's all true. Everybody, she said, she said, this is not just for your kids. This is for everybody, and they really need to know. So she went through hours of sending out both postage and email. She sent them out to all these different companies, even to Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry. And of course, we're, we're not represented by a lawyer. They didn't even open up the package. We're not taking any work at this time, but good luck in your mission. Send it back to you. So she kept on researching, she kept on researching, and she's like, honey, we're going to have to do this ourselves. So because I have a record label, I said, you know what I'll do? I'll use my record label and promote it through my record label. Then if the book takes off, now it'll give the musical side of what I do a chance. Because now, okay, this is what he does. The book is a good read. Let's see what he's doing music and who he's representing, and hopefully it can make one hand wash the other one grinds no more. So, so I hold, so self-published, Roy Dunn Records is the publisher. I have a team that works with me on tour production, locking those, ranking the triggers, who's my brother, and many, many, I have great supporters. Judy, her daughter, Deshaun, my wife, Roy. There's so many people who's helping me. <coughs> and Winnie, when, if and God, I, I won't even say if, like my brother Wayne will say, when the blessings start to come, my team comes to me because I need help. I can't do this by myself. I'm just a black man. I'm just a bus driver. <laughs> I am just a bus driver. An intelligent one. Well, thank you very much. Okay, is there any... any you said that by the bus driver, I'm going to fight the bus driver. <laughs> 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 well, I'll tell you. So, you said people with a cane. You park in the middle of the street, and then we're told you got to ask the Lord to get on. And I'm like, well, I'm afraid that you can't go out of the house. Then you can't go over one day. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'll tell you, just, um, just to defend MTA just a little bit, because I've been doing this for 17 years, okay? Um, me, like, you know, after hours, they let you off the bus at a certain area. Yeah. You know, two times, I've let off someone who fell. And although they put a big, big sign saying you can request to stop, when you get hurt, they come right back to one yeah. lane, the yeah. bus driver. Yeah. So my thing is, I'm letting you off that bus, stop. Yeah. I'm sorry. But I'm letting you that way if you fall. Then I covered myself. You fell in the bus stop. Okay? Sometimes many of our machines are don't work. You think that the thing it says Neil and sometimes the driver might even press the seat. It's not going anywhere. The hydraulics, the whole air compression system is off. We have cheap materials out there. Okay? And unfortunately they put all the good bus systems downtown. Okay? Why they can't raise the raise the price? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it ain't got nothing to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a different day. That's a different day. That's a different day. That's a different day. That's on the pet channel. What's up? Man? <laughs> so, what was the on tape. That's something. My wife would have to institutionalize. You see, my wife, she's the business person for finance. Okay. Um, first, I mean, she got it on, was it Kindle? Kindle or Kindle? Okay, where those who have iPads and that stuff, you could get it. And we're working on the Amazon, I forgot the name of the Amazon thing, because Kindle is Barnes and Noble, right? Or is it the other way around? No, Barnes and Noble is no, Kindle is Amazon. Okay, well then we have it on Nook, right? Yeah. It's Nook, we have it on Nook. Okay, um, trying to get things done. Hi, Erica. I'm trying to get things done, but she's the one who has to, because between, I have three other books that's out, but it's not out, but it's, I'm waiting for White House to take off. 
And once I make the name for myself, then I'll release the other three books, and one of them is a sequel to why. Okay, then I want to ask you another question. Uh, if you release some type of books, are they still directed to the same age area? No, my books actually. Delroy, which is the other book that I... It's kind of somewhat similar to this book, but it takes you in a different area, and we're going back to the early 80s, what life was like in the early 80s, and so forth and so forth. So forth. The lesson is basically the same, but it's more of a monster type thing. Angel, which is another book, is my imagination took me to an area before time began, what it may have been like in the heavens before the earth was created, so forth and so on. And that's also a very good thing, okay? But I don't want to really talk too much about those books yet. But all the books that I have in mind is to reach, reach, and reach. Life of a prostitute. Uh, things that we don't understand because we don't, we're not prostitutes or we're not drug abusers, so forth and so on. I'm very empathic. I can listen to your story and it becomes heartfelt to me to the moment I can write something and it's exactly what it is. Without put it in dark print. In dark print? <laughs> and a little bigger. Well, I, it all depends. You know, it, it depends on the format, so forth and so on. But there's a lot of possibilities. I mean, there's even a possibility that I can have this reformatted, but I have to see. Uh, Something going like that snowball going in here. And I want White America to read this. White Out, the title White Out is about White America rules. White America dictates. White America make the plan. White America can come into our neighborhoods and do what they want to. And nothing happens. And in this book, yes, the thing might be a little negative, but White Out means White Out. But at the same token, I'm not saying to fight, I'm saying realize what they're doing and combat it to the point where they can the call them the peace after the respect is due. But we have to start with ourselves first. And right, and Michael Jackson wrote a song that's so ideal now. Man in the mirror. We have to look at ourselves before we look at anybody else. Well, I can understand what
she brought the painting to do t-shirts for, uh, for something that they were doing. And then Oprah sent t-shirts so she could use the t-shirts that she was going to do. But now this event is coming back again. She'll be able to use my painting because she's telling her we have a painting that we're going to use. Plus, at the right time, she's going to say, Because it's coming from somebody that she knows and trusts that has a relationship. Okay, okay. So you just have to keep going. So I know you are. And I'll make sure you do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta remember, when, when those things come in uh, from yesterday, I'm like, when it comes in, there's most of the people that would feel that stuff are white. Yeah. Okay. Same thing for old so, you know, like the media magazine, Essence, even Essence, the, the, you know, the cheap, the editor cheap, it's like, so, um, you know, so they decide, the fashion person, the big clients, you know, for the people for the Essence magazine, um, but a lot of people know that, you know, they can, yeah, you know, so, but also, they have to put the attention on this, such as the whole book, just in the way, as in the painting, and I said it's from Wayne Burke. Right. True, yes. And then she said, oh, isn't that big to put yeah. it up there on her show? Yeah. Or she puts it somewhere, and it goes, I go, that's my name. Yeah. And they say, it's money first. But who's going to sue? Who's going to sue? Right. So, right. so it has a relationship okay. before you get to the No, they, they said that you got to get that in the well, that's in the back of the night. Oh, I'm going to go back. Any, anybody back there have any questions? Uh, hi, Javon. Hello. Anybody have any, have any questions back there? Oh, okay. All right. No? Well, then, basically, um, that's it. Um, you know, I, I have a few people just coming in. My mother-in-law. Yes? I'd like to know if you could read an excerpt from the book. Sure. So um, Okay. You want the actual book or any part? The epilogue, I mean. What you feel would represent what the, you know, what the story is going to kind of be about. Give us a little taste. Okay, I'll read this. Know, we're purchasing because we are going to purchase. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> In today's time and age, is God still alive? Will blacks in America and all over the world, all around the world, ever be free, or will they keep themselves in bondage and be slaves to their desires? Can one man change the fate of his people? Will whites in America and other parts of the world ignore the warnings of war? Let the teachers take you to a time in the very near future where God has dismissed. Satan uses technology to rule the world. Learn how hate, like a seed planted in rich soil, can grow and manifest into the plague of destruction. Learn that everything you do does matter. Our children are the future, but will black children be in our future? Can humankind learn equality exists in each and everyone's blood? Will the sleeping God intervene before it's too late? Let Peter be just show you in the greatest of times that God never sleeps. Revenge is sweet when it is productive, but when it leads to total extermination. Should I go further? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's the hook.
okay? There's true stories in this. Yes, it's fictional, but it's true stories. There's a part in this book where a young man got molested in the airport because he's coming from Jamaica West Indies, and he just had to have some kind of drug on him. So after the customs searched him, and they didn't find anything inside of his suitcase, his clothes. They took him into a room and molested him to see if he had drugs hidden in certain areas of his body. I got a friend on Facebook who asked me if I could get his number. I mean, if he could get my number. When I sent him my number, he called and he said, let me tell you something. I cried at this particular point in the book because what actually happened to him. So, it's just, I mean, yes, it's fiction, but there's a lot of truth in this book. A lot. A lot of people going around um, having sex, knowing that they have AIDS. Yeah. And they're purposely giving it to, oh, well, shit, what the hell, I'm dying, so let, yeah. let me bring this money. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it is it's real. It's real. This book is real than it is than it's fiction. A lot of people who have read this, they say it's a documentary, but unfortunately, it's not. Darian, come in. Okay? This is my 17-year-old Darian. Okay? Darian, this is everybody. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, in the book, Darian is reverent, not reverent, reverent Darian Blackwood. And he became the most popular person on the planet because his ministry reached all over the world. He was the youngest to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay? But he was also the victim of hate because white America didn't like seeing a young brother driving a fancy car. Okay? Um, I tried to let my kids know that it's fiction, but part of the fiction can really be he likes fancy things more than I do, and I love fancy things. But unless he's gonna be a drug dealer, even if you're gonna be a drug dealer, you have to be a smart drug yeah. dealer. Because there's a lot of drug dealers out here who's getting killed because they don't have any type of education. They don't know how to disperse, they don't know how to invest. They do things that draws attention from, to the FBI. You understand? If you are driving a lot of Mercedes, and you park in front of a dingy old ghetto area where don't don't even have a driveway. Don't you think the police have control? Don't you think they're gonna go? What's wrong with this picture? Let's see what's going on. And next thing you know, he's getting busted, and all of that goes away. We have to think. We have to utilize the God given. You don't even have to. You don't have to have no high level of education all the time. And we need to, we need to, we need to end the book. I'm the father. And Donovan, come in. <laughs> All right? This is my oldest, 18-year-old silly guy. But I love him. <laughs> All right? And in the book, we die. We're the father and son that the young man saw killed. Okay? We died. And it was because of our death while he got ingenious, genius and used science and technology to expose all the hate in the world. He was on, he hated himself because it was because of him while he died. He did something that caused a police officer to kill us. And all I was doing was chastising him. But we are not allowed to chastise because it's against ACS or it's against this or it's against that. So what happened? We died, but and he hated himself so much that he was heading down the wrong. He was so fair at age 16 mm -hmm. that grown drug dealers in the heart of the Bronx were scared of him. But he really had a mission. His mission was he wanted to die because he could not deal with the fact that it's because of him why his family died. But instead of getting his wish, he got respect. But then his little brother, who was the star of the show, put him in his place. No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs>
that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> unless Brother Wayne got some more stuff you want to throw at me. Okay. We have to come back. Have to come back. Have to come have back. Critique. Uh, well, listen, I have business cards with my email address. I welcome the critique. I really do. You may not welcome the critique. No, I do. Sisters of Carol Bookstore. We're rough on our office. <laughs> come at me. Come at me. Oh, we can come at you. Come at me. Come at me. <laughs> all right. So, I thank you all very much. My brother, I don't know you, but thank you for coming through. That's my cousin. Oh, that's cuz your son, cuz. Alright. Um, I thank everybody for sitting through this, listening to me, and if you can, do get the book and read it and pass the word on. Because that's what I want. I just want to pass the word on. Um, twenty dollars. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. And believe it or not, some of you I don't know. But I love every single person. We love you. I love you. Right. All right. I got it. I'm still here, so you know.